This is code.org, and this is tic-tac-toe. So we've started on our game. Let's just display what's going on right now. So I can make these moves. I can take turns. The text isn't always updating and things like that, but we're well on our way. If you don't have this stuff, go back and do the other bubbles. All right, so for our tic-tac-toe game, it's important to know the layout and the different text areas on the screen. As you can see in the diagram to the right, there are nine different squares that exist, and each is labeled with a letter character from A to I. I'm going to click on this design mode button way up here, guys. And if I click over here, right, we can't necessarily see the square, but you can when you click. Notice space A. Look, if I click in the center, and I'm being careful because if I drag one of these, it's going to get really messy if it lets me start editing this. So space B, space C, space D, and there are... Did it let me edit this? It did, which is why you should not drag one of these. Um, space F, so on and so forth. We can manage. And that's why we don't drag these. Be really careful with these because you want to keep them in spots. D, G, so on and so forth. And so that's actually how our items are getting displayed. These blank quote unquote boxes, if you will, or spaces are getting populated with text. See how this is occurring here? I can do it manually here, and this is just the starting value. But what happens upon the program running and us clicking here is the computer updates that space, the code does, and put in text. All right, so with that being said, let's first determine the win conditions for the horizontal spaces, right? So win that's met. As we can see from the diagram above, yep, there are three possible horizontal win conditions. So if we had the same uh, X or O in A, B, C, D, or in E, D, E, F, or N, G, H, I. So here, or here, or here, all of those would be wins. Create a conditional statement. That's a scary term for if. It just means if. Create an if statement that tests whether X or O player has scored a win based on the horizontal spaces. There are variables for A through I that contain string values. The string value will either be X or O if a square has been selected, or it will be blank if a, which is this, if a square has not been picked. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure we have what they're saying. There are variables through A through I, and let's look for two. Yep, here's two. Okay, oh yeah, and I'm seeing variables A through I. Now these are defined within the function. The function's everything within this green mouth thing box. It's all the code that's running uh, or contained within this method. So we have variable A. What is variable A equal to? Well, it's a e set equal to get text A space. What is A space? Well, if I go over here, A space. So right now it would be equal to nothing, right? But so when the first when the program first starts, it's equal to absolutely nothing. Same with B space, same with C space, right? It's grabbing the text. However, if I were to click on these, and it gets populated, it gets changed to an X or Y, variable A or B or so on will be equal to X and Y. So when we execute this method, we are checking for a win. So the first thing we do when this method runs is we tell the computer, hey, get the A space value, assign that to the letter or the variable A, get the B space value, assign it to B, and we're grabbing all those values. Now we wanna check if there is an actual win. So if else statement to check horizontal rows for win. Okay, so if win, what's one way they could win? Well, we want to think about this in terms of each value. So if, and I'm going to switch to text mode because honestly it might be a bit easier right here. If the variable A, so if A is equal equal to what? Now remember, I'm using equal equals because this is me asking the question. One equals is me creating a new variable A and assigning it whatever text is in A space. Two equals mean, hey computer, is A equal to, now you might just say X, and the reason you might think that is because that would be correct, except X is what we call a string value, right? It's a representation of text and not a variable itself. So X would actually have to be contained within quotes here. So if it is equal to, if A is equal to X, but that is not sufficient, right? Well, they need to have three in a row. So now I would say B, if B is equal, equal, and then again, in quotes, X. Now, this is going to break. 
And that is because we need to let the computer know that we mean both of these. The computer doesn't understand these two things just sitting next to each other. But if we put and and, now I'm asking the computer, hey, computer, is the A space or the A variable, the A space, have an X in it? And does it have, does the B space or the B variable, the B space, have an X in it? Well, that still wouldn't be a win. So I need an and and. C, where the C space, is going to also have an X in it. And that right there would be an X win. Now, I want to do this identical thing, except down here for O. So honestly, guys, I'm not going to retype all this. I'm going to do a Control C or a uh, right click or a Command C on a Mac and Control V or Command V on a Mac and paste. And now I'm going to say if it's equal to O. Now, remember, what's tricky about this is not putting zeros. I oftentimes mess this up and put a zero here because they look so similar. So you might want to be careful about that. So what we're asking now is if A is filled with X, 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 A, B, C is X, 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 then X wins. And my if statement is over, right? This, a conditional statement, an if statement right here, only one part of this can ever run. Either this statement here is true and this runs, or it will check the next statement. It cannot say this is true. It's going to have X win and then run this. Nope. Everything in this blue block would be done after that. Okay, but we are definitely not done because so far we only have A, B, C. I need to do the same for D, E, F, and G, H, I. So let me hammer that out real quick. And there's a few tricks I'm going to show you. In particular, you want to make sure to separate these out. So that is the first row. And, and, now I'll keep going. And now this looks like a mess. I'm actually going to separate this onto two lines so you can see how much text is here. Now, keep in mind, we do have a parenthesis at the beginning and the end to enclose the entire if, the entire condition, because we're asking now three things. My and and though here is absolutely wrong. It should be an or, and an or is what's called the pipe, two pipes. That is a shift and it's under the backspace or above the enter button. So now I'm saying, okay, if these things are equal to X, that's a win. However, if they're not, keep checking. What about this row, A, D, E, F? If all of those are X, that's a win. Okay, maybe this chunk in this parentheses is false. But what about this? If these three are, then it's still a win. So the and and means both parts of it have to be true on each side has to be true. But the or means any part of it could be true. Now, that will be this statement. Something I do dislike about this is how kind of messy it feels. And I'll get in a way to organize this in a minute. Um, and you, I would suggest, although it looks long and complex, keeping this on one line because it can mess up and make it more difficult to read if you're new to doing things like this. So I'm going to do the same thing down here for O real quick. Okay, so now I'm doing the same thing for O. I'm checking, just like I was before, if O is equal or, or, or. The most common missed things for students or that I personally miss are the ors and then keeping this logic you separated out. So I want to hit one more time. Notice I have a parenthesis here and here because that's enclosing my entire quote unquote question. I want to know if all three of these things are are equal to that or all three of these things from this row or all three of these things from this row. Those are the most common missed things. So you want to pay special attention to those. Okay. And create a logic that tests for a horizontal win. Check this out. Sometimes it's easier to work with text-based mode. Yeah, definitely. Yep. We did that. You can toggle. Yep. Uh, and this is an example of how this could be. You need to pay attention to case. I believe they're using capital. Um, we'll find out momentarily. So let me see what win, let's see if win does anything right now. Okay, so this method should change the text. So let's go ahead and test. I almost just lost against myself. Yay! Oh, wins. Let's show it one more time. O, X, O, X, O. O wins. Now I want to have an uh, X win. So O, X, O, X. O, X. Okay, that's looking good. This text still isn't, um, still is showing automatically, which we will need to adjust in the near future. 
Okay, now let's see. Oh, now it wants us to handle vertical. The difference, guys, now when you get to this, the difference in vertical is you're going to be checking A, D, G, right? Because vertical, if I look at these spaces, there's the A space, the B space, and the G space. So when I'm doing it, I'm going to check these three, then I'll check these three, then I'll check these three. That's the distinction. It's not as um, obvious or in order as this is, but it's very similar. And where I'm going to do that is vertical columns right here. So honestly, guys, what I'm going to do, and you really want to be careful with copy and pasting again and again, but I'm actually going to take my whole thing, because I've already written it, grab that, go down here, and what did I take? See, I'm already going to mess this up. If, there we go, if, and then now these three things, except, again, I have to change all of these. So I need A, D, G, because that's... From these values, that's these rows, because those values are, are populated from the text. So A, D, G, uh, B, E, yeah, H, and C, F, I. Cool. And that's that first one. Okay. And so now I'm going to go ahead and do the next one for O. Same deal, though, vertical. Okay, that's looking good. Now I have O. Use the combination, and we've already done that. Diagonals, yikes. Finally, we need to check when conditionals by diagonals. Discuss with your partner. Let me check, let me test this out real quick. O wins, looking good. All right, you want to test often. So for diagonals, guys, keep in mind what the squares are. The squares would be A, E, I. A, E, I. So I'm actually going to write that somewhere. Uh, oh, here's our diagonals. A, so if A, A equals equals X and and E equals equals in quotes X and and I equals equals X, then that would be this diagonal, A, E, I. Now, what's this diagonal? C, E, G. So I'm going to go like this. And do it or let me hammer this out real quick so or if c e g is all the same then x would win now i need to do the same for o so let me get that in here great and let's test yeah that is also looking good i want to hit upon though the part of this that is kind of throwing me off you'll notice and i had fixed this before when i hit start and click and I hit and I click it is a O and not an X right which is not what we would expect now I had adjusted this I'm not sure if it saved originally the reason it's doing this is this logic right here where I'm checking if turn modulo or t turn divided by two has a remainder that is equal to one we originally asked to make it be X turn if the turn count was odd however they're starting us with X off the bat the problem is, when we start, turn is zero. Zero is not technically an odd number. So to adjust this, I'm just going to set turn equal to one. I had done it last time, and that should give us the correct behavior. You can also adjust this logic or make O go first. It's your game after all. That all being said, we have a rockin' game where it knows, let's see if I can actually win against myself, who won. Cool. Onward.